This year's PES prioritizes style, presentation, and graphical prowess. However, the most important part of a football simulation, the gameplay, severely suffers. While PES is great to look at, it's not very fun to play, especially at the highest levels. If EA's FIFA series ever had a leg up on Konami's Pro Evolution Soccer, it certainly had to be its style of presentation. This year, however, PES cleans up its UI, making it incredibly easy to jump from the team management screen to editing a player's attributes. It's all just a bit snappier. This rise in quality is also seen before matches, as beautiful ceremonies play in haunting football cauldrons all around the world. This carries over to the raw visual quality, as players look immaculate in all types of weather conditions. There's a lot to do amongst it all, with your everyday Master League and kickoff modes, accompanied by the brilliant online co-op that is just a blast with a friend. The gameplay in PES suits this type of mode because matches end up feeling a bit arcadey and wild. However, that doesn't translate at all to the higher difficulty single player matches, primarily seen in the game's Master League Manager mode. A plethora of small additions, like a slightly improved negotiation system, don't feel like enough of a jump, even for a yearly sports title. Other modes have little to no additions, although the inclusion of the random selection matches might be the best thing to happen in the market, since FIFA introduced Lounge Mode, where players would start matches with random handicaps or bonuses. With random selection matches, players choose up to four different leagues or teams, by which the game pulls random players from, to form one super team. You can imagine the madness that would ensue if one player snags Ronaldo and Messi, while the others left with the defender from England's second division. The best thing about modes like this is their ability to put players in unique situations, forcing them to come up with new tactics on the fly as they are thrown into a match with 11 players. As someone who almost exclusively picks the same team in every match, it's nice to challenge others with these different teams, as both sides are given a mixture of players they are comfortable with and those from rival teams that they'd rather leave on the bench. Now in terms of gameplay, I've played the PES series since the days of Winning 11-9, and there are certain rules and mechanics that the game has consistently applied over every title since then. PES 2018, when facing computer-controlled players, throws all of that out of the window. Players like Fabregas somehow can't string together a simple short passing play. PES 2018's gameplay feels incredibly random when playing against the AI. No addition of addicting game modes or spectacular presentation can overshadow what happens on the pitch. And that's what it comes down to. A great football game, but a terrible football simulation. One huge pet peeve I've had with PES is the scandalous slide tackle animations. Every time you hit the square button, your player will throw both feet studs up at the opposition. While FIFA has an array of nuanced and slower slide tackles, PES seemingly wants to send you off the pitch, making it impossible to ever see normal tackles. It's either the greatest and most perfectly timed tackle you'll ever see, or a straight red card challenge. While I bemoan FIFA's lack of innovation in a few of their recent titles, the gameplay rarely fails to impress, and the same cannot be said about Pro Evo 2018.